Hello, this is Dan Nobles and welcome to this tutorial on creating hair in cycles. If you've already created a character using your regular, uh, the old Blender render version, this is how you bring it into cycles. Well, let me show you first the, uh, the render that I have. This is the render from the Blender render. And as you can see, the hair here is eh, pretty flat and Probably with the original blender render I could have done a better job if I would pretty much known what I was doing with the hair, but uh, This is what I've got right now out of the blender render. So let's go ahead and change over to cycles cycles render So there's a couple things that you need to look for when you're doing the cycles render as far as the hair You need to be using the correct version of blender so if we go to the splash screen. So here you can see I'm using Blender version 2.65 and it's release R54625. This includes the um, hair rendering in cycles. Uh, in order to get this version, you can't download it off of the normal supported version. You have to uh, go to blender.org blender and download one of the uh, daily uh, versions. That's to the right of the normal download. Also, if uh, if you're watching this and Blender 2.66 has come out, I believe that version will support the Cycles Hair Render when it comes out. Okay, so the other thing that we need to look at is, let me go ahead and select the hair here so I can get to particles. You can see that if I go to particles right now, collapse some of these. I do not have anything here that says cycles rendering for hair. So what you need to do is go to your rendering option screen here and go to the feature set and change it from supported to experimental. And if you have the version 2.66 you won't need to do this I don't think. It'll be in the supported version. So then we go back to particles and you can see there's now a cycles hair rendering. And you can see there's not very many settings here, but uh, just to quickly go over some of these, um, you have a mode and these are presets that you can choose. And it basically goes from a really quick rendering of hair to uh, a lot better rendering and taking a lot more time and the true normal is kind of the default, so I'm going to leave it at that. Um, we have the shape, which determines kind of like the, um, the way the hair is rendered. If we leave it at zero, it starts at a thick base and goes progressively to, a, to the tip in a progressive manner. If you change this, then you'll get different results. For example, if I change it to negative 0.8, then it gives you sort of like a, a, um, a, a length of hair that is same along the length of the hair, and then at the very end it's, it tapers off. And then you have a width multiplier, and this is basically what we've seen in the old rendering as far as um, you know, putting it on the material if you're familiar with doing the hair in the old way. You start from the root and then go to the tip. And this this setting right here is way too high. We want to use something like, I usually use a .005. We'll try that. And then the tip, of course, of hair would be down to nothing. So we leave that as zero, at zero. If you did change this, then that's where this closed tip comes into play. If you uh, have a wider tip, then this would actually close the end of that tip. Okay, so that's pretty much all you have to do to bring in the hair that you had in your regular render, in the cycles render, basically. But there's a few things that you need to look at when you do this. In fact, three main things, or at least what I found that we should be looking at, and that is the, the emission number of particles I have a thousand particles for this hair. The other thing is the children. 
and right now I have 10 and 50 which is just so I could render it and see it very quickly and the third thing that you want to look at is the root all of the, these three things work together in order to, to get um, the hair coverage I guess you would call it so if we go ahead and change this to rendered I can kind of show you what I'm talking about here zoom in on the hair here okay and you can't see it yet but this hair is very thin it's not covering the scalp at all and that is because if I go to my um, children's setting I have the display at 10 so if you bump that up to something like 300 you can see that that has dramatically affected the, uh, the look of the hair so when you do this um, you just have to kind of play around with the child setting the root setting and the number of particles now what I'm doing with mine since I've already created this character and I already have my number of particles I'm leaving this as it is and just changing the other two settings because if you of course if you you know do the free edit and you go back to change your number of um, particles then your hair whatever style you had just goes out the window at least that's been my experience okay so that is pretty much the hair in cycles bringing it over from your blender render. the other thing that you have to be concerned with when you do your cycles hair is your hair really needs to have material you can continue to use the uh, material that you set like for this one I have this kind of she's supposed to have red hair and this is kind of what I came up with so it's using the material 9 and that's pretty much pretty much the you know what you get but if you want more realistic looking hair then you want to go to your materials and use nodes and you'll want to set a material and I'll show you how I did that go back to solid here and let me bring in my sort of my finished product for this so you can see what nodes I used and everything okay selecting the hair okay so I have uh, the view node editor down here and I'll just go full screen here so you can see what this is and this is the setup that I used for creating the hair and you'll notice that I dropped an image node image texture node in here and this is where you use the image that's going to influence how the hair looks and I'll show you what that image looks like okay this is the image that I used and basically I just pulled this off of Google did a search for red hair and I thought this looked kinda like what I wanted so I'm using this I'm not gonna use this in the final product because of course you know it's somebody's copywritten image but what what it does is it pulls out the different colors like you'll see some some black in there you'll see some lighter red and um, you know just a variety of colors and it's not mapping this exact image over the um, the hair what it's doing is it's taking that these colors as the root of the hair and then creating the hair from that and you'll see what happens with the final render here but before I show you that I want to show you one final thing um, this character was brought over from Initially, I created it with Make Human, and I did all the uh, editing to the character as far as the, you know, the modeling, you know, kind of um, did my own enhancements on it, and also created a texture for this character. But if you use a model for Make Human, what you'll notice when you get to Cycles is when you try to render, of course, none of the uh, textures are showing up. 
So just to very quickly show you how to do that, and just in case you're using a character from Make Human, then we'll go to um, like the skin, for example. So I'll give you a shot of that real quick. Um, I just brought in my texture that I created from the uh, Make Human original texture. It's just uh, changed from what I did. And same thing for the mouth, same setup. The eyes are a little bit different. I'll give you a screenshot of that real quick. Uh, just to be able to get the uh, transparency that is needed and also the glossiness of the eye. And here's the uh, brow setup. And if you're like me, when you first brought in the, the character and did a render, you'd notice that you immediately you'd notice you have black brows above the eyes and the eyes not coming in correctly and the eyelashes not coming in correctly. Everything looking pretty much black or wrong. So that's how you solve that. You just uh, assign your nodes to these different these different settings and then it comes in. So I'm going to do a render now and show you what the end result is. Okay, so this is the rendered image that I came up with after making my settings with the hair. And I have to say the hair looks a lot better. However, when I rendered this, it took four and a half hours to render, which is just horrendous compared to the less than 10 seconds it took to, to render uh, through the regular Blender render. And uh, let me show you the kind of a comparison between the two. Okay, so these are the two images that I came up with. This is the Blender internal render and the Blender cycles. And as you can see, quite a difference there. Um, the cycles does a much better job. And you can see the hair is much more realistic. However, like I said, um, less than 10 seconds to render this. Four and a half hours just to render this 800 by 800 image. And I know my computer's not the latest and the greatest, but I know it's not that bad either. So there may be some settings that I can still tweak in order to get these, this uh, render time down. But um, that's pretty much it. I uh, hope you enjoyed the tutorial. And if you're curious who this character is, she's affectionately known as the pilot. And she is going to be appearing in an gr animated graphic novel that I'm involved with. And if you want to check it out, uh, we are at destinytgn.com. And we have one video up right now. It's the beginning of the story that we're telling. And we're hoping to generate some interest. So if you, if you check it out, please go there and subscribe to our mailing list. And we'll let you know about any new videos that we're posting up there. We will not spam you. But if you like science fiction, you like Blender modeling, I hope you'll check it out. Thanks, and thanks for watching this Blender tutorial.